Hello. In this third part of the of the theme number seven, I will then discuss uh, international trade and the so-called pollution haven hypothesis and how it could be addressed with the uh, carbon tariffs. So let's start with the simple uh, illustration of how international trade uh, influences uh, the consumption and production between two countries and then how that can also then lead to the uh, rise or, or decline of emissions in the importing country and exporting country. So let's again consider the example with two countries. We have country X on the left hand side and country Y on the right hand side. And uh, let's consider a starting point where there is no trade. So initially, then in the domestic uh, uh, equilibrium of, uh, of supply and demand, so we have de this kind of decreasing uh, uh, demand curve and increasing supply curve in country X. So initially, without trade, uh, the um, uh, equilibrium would be in point B, where the, where the price level is Px and, uh, and uh, amount of uh, uh, consumed and produced of, of commodity A is, is Ax. And uh, then suppose that there is, uh, there is uh, some kind of trade barriers are, are lowered and that becomes, uh, uh, this commodity becomes uh, uh, subject to uh, international trade. So, so basically country X starts to import this commodity A from country Y in this example of two countries, and uh, we have this kind of world equilibrium price PW. So as a result of the trade, then, then uh, we can follow this uh, demand curve. So consumption uh, moves uh, from this point B to point E. So consumption increases to amount uh, A DX. So we are in this point E. And uh, and the price level that the consumers face is this uh, is this kind of uh, uh, world market uh, price PW. But that at that price, and then the producers uh, then then producers follow the supply curve, and then producers uh, are in this point C. So then then we can see that the production of this commodity decreases from this initial level of AX to ASX. And the difference uh, of ADX and ASX is then the imports from country country Y. So with the world trade, then then it sort of decouples this uh, consumption and production in the in the importing country. Then consumption is higher than the the domestic production, and the difference uh, is exported from from other countries. In this example, country Y. So we saw that in this, this uh, case where this initially the domestic price level was higher than the world market price, then, then domestic production decreased and domestic consumption increased and the difference is covered by the, by the uh, imports. So what about an exporting country Y? So we move to the, to the right hand side figure. So initially before trade, then in this uh, this country, the price level was lower than the, the world market price, which is PY. So the domestic equilibrium is in this point F, where the supply and demand curves are crossing. And uh, when this uh, country Y then opens to the, to the international trade, then they find, of course, the, the domestic producers find that this uh, uh, international price level is higher than what they get in the domestic market. So they start to increase their production and um, and sell to the to the international market. So so the producers in this country why they move from point F to point H. So they increase production and they also get the get the uh, better price PW by by exporting. On the other hand, also then the the in the domestic market in in country why the price level. Uh, increases because the producers have possibility to either either sell domestically or export to another country. So assuming that there is not some kind of large transportation costs, then also the domestic price will then in country Y will increase to the to the global level. So this means that the consumption decreased because then the consumers are following this demand curve 
and and uh, the consumers in country Y are then moving from point F to point G. So domestic consumption in country Y decreases and the price increases. And the difference between uh, this uh, H and so this difference between this H and, and G, then this is exported. Uh, and if you have only two countries, then this amount exported by country Y should be also equal to the amount imported by country X. So we see in this, uh, this example that this kind of opening of international trade, it will benefit the consumers in the importing country. Uh, however, then, then the producers uh, get lower price and, uh, and uh, produce less in country X. On the other hand, in country Y, we saw that, that, that uh, producers benefit of these export opportunities. So this, uh, these firms that export, they, they produce more and get the, get the higher price. Uh, whereas then consumers in the exporting country, they, they have to pay a higher price and, and consume less. So, so consumers are then worse off after this, uh, this kind of opening of, of uh, trade. But then, of course, we need to keep in mind that this is just a partial equilibrium. Um, so, so of course, then the consumers also can get uh, get uh, revenues from this uh, exporting sector, and perhaps then they have like other other than than income income effects that that this kind of partial equilibrium discussion doesn't take into account. Now, how does this then relate to the to the pollution and this kind of transboundary and global pollutants? So if you think about then that this is some kind of like uh, like heavy manufacturing commodity, so suppose that then opening up this kind of uh, uh, trade in in some kind of uh, uh, manufacturing good that also results as for example uh, uh, carbon dioxide emissions, then we would see that uh, that uh, emissions in country X, which is the importing country, uh, they decrease because production goes down in this uh, importing country. And the same applies also to local air pollutant site like sulfur dioxide. So um, one, one uh, reason, for example, that, uh, that uh, uh, air quality has improved in Europe uh, uh, with, uh, with the globalization is that, uh, that, uh, uh, in, that uh, we are nowadays importing a lot of this kind of uh, heavy ma manufactured uh, Goods such as steel from from Asia, so so in Europe then then uh, this kind of imports of of uh, um, highly polluting uh, uh, or, or goods that are are involve uh, heavy pollution in the production stage, but not necessarily so much in the in the uh, consumption stage. Then country X can can this importing country can can. Uh, a benefit in terms of better better local environmental quality because the production goes down. On the other hand, then this kind of pollution then moves to this exporting country. So here in exporting country, the, the emissions uh, also, if, if this kind of uh, production involves heavy emissions, then increase in the production implies also that, uh, that emissions increase even though the, the consumption in country Y decreases then this kind of export production uh, increases then the, uh, the emissions and perhaps also leads to uh, deteriorating environmental quality in country Y. So, for example, there's, uh, this, um, uh, this is a situation in large, many, many countries in Asia, for example, in China, when this, uh, this um, exports of, uh, of uh, heavy manufacturing, such as uh, steel industry, have also then led to increase in the in the pollution and also uh, deterioration of uh, of air quality in China, and and in fact a lot of this kind of production goes to exports to 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 for example to European countries. So this this il sim simple figure illustrates quite well this kind of situation that uh, that uh, opening up of trade can can also also then. Then not only lead to uh, import and export of the of the of the manufactured good, but also the emissions are are then switching from from the between the importing and exporting country. So this analysis so far it just uh, 
takes into account uh, the the import and export and and we didn't really uh, consider any any kind of uh, environmental regulations here but of course one possibility that uh, that why for example if we compare these supply curves of of country x and one country y it could be of course that uh, this uh, country x has a steeper supply curve if for example country x is uh, facing more more stringent uh, environmental regulation so for example if it's more costly to produce because the, there are technology standards or or for example um, uh, carbon taxes or or other kind of environmental taxes or 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 some kind of permit uh, uh, tradable permit mechanism in place in country x whereas in country y there's not such kind of regulations then that could explain why this kind of um, kind of um, country country y can can produce with the with the lower cost and export to to country x and this kind of situation is referred to commonly as a pollution haven hypothesis so that uh, if if for example in developing countries uh, the, there is less stringent environmental regulations then then uh, companies might uh, have incentive to move production to this kind of uh, uh, kind of cheaper countries and 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 this kind of leads to then also like a sort of exporting of this uh, production related related emissions to this kind of uh, pollution haven. So there has been uh, in the literature uh, empirical studies that that, that uh, is this really really true or not? Uh, um, there there for a long time the evidence was uh, was somewhat uh, inconclusive. Uh, but uh, but uh, definitely this has been also of concern of the of the policymakers, and uh, very recently, in fact, in the EU, uh, the EU introduced uh, uh, carbon tariffs so in the form of so-called carbon border adjustment mechanisms or CBAM. So so this is a relatively new regulation that was just decided in uh, 2022, and. Uh, and this is uh, this is going to be uh, taking place uh, in a, in a, in a, in the near future. And currently, it's still uh, still kind of uh, we're learning learning more about this uh, this mechanism. But uh, the idea how it is supposed to work when when it becomes uh, uh, in in full force from twenty twenty six onwards. So importers of goods in the EU then then need to register with national authorities and uh, and then they can buy also also this kind of uh, uh, certificates to cover the emissions and the price will be dependent on the weekly average auction price of the eu ets allowances so in this way this uh, mechanism will be connected to this um, to this um, uh, eu ets this uh, this kind of uh, tradable uh, so, so the EU level tradable emission certificate uh, uh, scheme that we have discussed earlier. So importers then need to also also buy certificates to cover this kind of imported uh, emissions. And uh, then then these importers will need to declare the emissions and and have the corresponding number of certificates also. So in that sense, the imports also become become uh, connected to this uh, to this emission trading scheme that is already placed and governs the 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 eu pollutions so there is a possibility then that if the importers can prove that they have paid already carbon price uh, for example in the in the country where they are importing so where the production takes place then this can be deducted from this from these EU ETS. So for example, if if there is in, in China some kind of uh, carbon pricing mechanism in place, then the importers can can deduct this price that has already been been paid. And if they have already paid the full price or more then then this has does not need to be to be paid again. So so this avoids this kind of possibility of sort of double double counting. So currently we are in the case of um, a so-called transitional phase that continues till 2026. So currently there are specific industries are covered in this. In this uh, so there is cement, 
iron and steel, aluminum, fertilizers, electricity and hydrogen. So these are the uh, most carbon intensive uh, uh, sectors which also have the highest risk of, of carbon leakage. So during this, uh, this kind of uh, transitional phase, this is sort of like a pilot uh, that, uh, that these importers and producers and authorities are learning to, to use the system. So during this phase, the importers uh, only need to report the greenhouse gas emissions in, involved in their imports, but there is no need to buy or, or surrender this, uh, these uh, certificates. So it's more like kind of testing, testing phase currently. And, uh, and later on, it is also planned that this, uh, this uh, mechanism will, will also then expand to also other, other sectors and also then become tied to this uh, uh, sort of ETS regulation. So here on bottom part of the, the, the slide, you can see the, the source or for more information if you are interested in the CBAM. So this is, of course, like relatively new. Uh, EU level regulation that uh, that um, that this uh, has been has been decided and currently is in this in this pilot phase. So um, so far it, it will be then then seen that how then um, major countries outside of the EU, for example, U United States or China, will respond. That do they also introduce some kind of uh, uh, carbon tariffs? Do they see this as some kind of uh, uh, genuinely as this kind of like environmental related uh, regulation, or do they consider it as some kind of uh, protectionist uh, policy? So time will time will show how this will be then then influencing, for example, the world uh, world trade. Will it be will it be uh, becoming like more like a like a like a there is, of course, a risk that uh, that other countries see this as this kind of protectionist measure rather than as an environmental policy measure. Thank you very much for your attention. And next theme, we will look into then uh, cost-benefit analysis. Bye.